Hi, this is Joan, and you're looking at a um, beautiful young woman by the name of Aruna, I'm not sure how to pronounce that, but Aruna Reed and her son, Egypt. Um, she recently passed. She was taking the child to see his father. And when she left the apartment and was trying to get into her car, her ex husband I'm sorry, ex boyfriend, um, shot her. And um people who tried to intervene, he shot them too. So this reminds me very much of the nineties when I was um a young mother and I had just given birth to my youngest daughter and I had decided then that I've had enough of this particular guy. Um, I had been trying to leave before, and I kept telling people, I think the guy's listening in on my phone, or he's got bugs in the house or something. And back in the 90s, nobody thought of anything like that, that anybody was capable of something like that. So... Of course, nobody believed me, and I just figured it must be my imagination. But in any case, uh, right in the middle of me trying to leave, I became a pregnant, which was like, how did that even happen? But that is also another story. But the point is, I managed to get pregnant just when I'm trying to walk out the door. And after the baby is born, well, all through the pregnancy, he was insane. And after she was born, um, I was still like, okay, I got to get me and these kids out of this situation. So I went to court. I filed for divorce. I went to court and um, I, I tried to explain the situation. I had a female lawyer at first. And uh, even before that, I'd, I had had to go to domestic violence court or something like that. And I remember thinking that, okay, this won't be so bad. It was a black female judge. And I saw women coming there, you know, on crutches, uh, you know, women coming in broken. And this woman, they would tell their story and this female judge would say, well, I don't see where he did that. Well, I don't think he did that. I think you're exaggerating. Well, where's your doctor's statement? It was like, my God, I'm, and I just left. I just said, okay, I see where this one's going. So, um, I had the baby and part of the proceedings stated that since he didn't want to come pick up the child. I think we had an order of protection or something. I had to take the children to him if he couldn't make it. So my youngest daughter was born in the middle of December and it was brutally cold. And I'm trying to explain to them, I don't want to take her out there in that weather. I mean, I don't know. And there, the response I got was, um, no, this is the law. You need to take her and you're trying to stop him from seeing his children and all this other stuff. So my solution was I went back to him. I said, okay, I bide my time. I'm going to sit here. I'm going to put up with this fool and I'm going to make sure I don't get pregnant again, you know, and I'm going to make sure that, uh, you know, like a, it's a scene from What's Love Got to Do With It? Where they have, she starts fighting back. And they go to a hotel because they have a show to do. And he, they're in the room together. And he tells her to go to, go to your room, go to the bathroom and fix yourself up. And ordinarily, you know, something like that would make you argue with somebody. would need to fix myself up if you hadn't tried to break me down, you stupid son. But no, no, you keep thoughts like that in your head. That's what I did then. Regardless of what he said or did, I tried very hard to say, show baby, yes daddy, uh-huh, whatever you say. Inside I'm thinking, how the hell did I get stuck with this? But 
I'm not just thinking about me. I've got three other little lives depending on me getting out of this, getting them out of this. So, like I said, I went back. I went back and people will say, well, that's so stupid. You shouldn't, uh, you haven't had to go to court. You haven't seen what I saw. So it's easy for people who haven't been through things to tell you what you should do or what you shouldn't have done. Like I said, my strategy was nobody's going to help me. I don't have family. Uh, I don't have friends. Because one of the things a narcissist will do in real life is separate you from everybody. Now, I grew up in a narcissistic household, so that wasn't hard to do. I was already kind of separated. That's why my kids meant the world to me. Because it's kind of like if that's all you've got, you're putting all your effort into it. So, I went back. So, people can look at you and say, well, you knew he was crazy. Why did you go back to him? Did you give me an alternative? I mean, I have three kids here. And even if I manage to get them in daycare, I've got to at least be able to pay it up front before I get started. Before I can even get a paycheck. And this guy feels like whatever money I make is his money. Whatever money I make is his money, um, whatever money he makes is his money. So my working is, and does the hall, does the hall say, well, man, you're wrong. No, the hall says, well, you made a deal before God to stand with this guy. So regardless of what a fool he is, or regardless of how much he's trying to beat you upside the head, you need to stay with them. Now, if you are with someone and they are abusing you, that is not a marriage. That's not. That is a hostile takeover. And you need to leave as soon as you can. Now, someone who is treating you like this has... He's not just thinking with his own mind. He's got the devil whispering in his ear what to do and how to do it. So this is... You need to walk with your God no matter what you're doing. But you definitely need to listen to his voice now. That's the only way you're getting out of that. Like my sister-in-law told me, yeah, you're going to need your Jesus. So <laughs> she was right. That's what I thought. You know what? You're right. I definitely need him. And I'm getting out of this. Well, um, that baby girl that I had, she passed. And that was six years ago. So I tend to think my life is kind of a cautionary tale. And I'm trying very hard to warn everyone, uh, especially the younger women and uh, even older women who might be in a similar situation. It's easy. Everybody's life looks easy from the outside. It's easy to look at somebody and say, you should have done this or you shouldn't have done that. Well, you aren't there. You aren't feeling what they're feeling. You haven't been where they've been. And... I think now that our men are definitely, and I'm speaking for black women, our men, it's not hidden anymore. The floodgates are open. Other races look at our men and see their weakness. They've always seen it, but there was a certain morality and a certain discipline in other times in history that's not there now. One of the things that's missing is something like uh, you can read a dozen psychology books and the Bible can sum it up in maybe a sentence. This is Proverbs thirteen twenty four: He that spareth his rod hateth his son, but he that loveth him chasteneth him betimes. Okay, I also want you to notice something here the word he and his son okay it's i believe in you discipline all your children either gender you you discipline them because the world is not going to baby them well i think the world has kind of baby black men but in any case a man is supposed to grow up and i believe be the spokesperson the ascendant sign, maybe, of the family. He's the one that people see. 
the one that people listen to. And if he does not get respect, the family is not going to get respect. So you have to, well, you have to put the emphasis on um, disciplining that son. And notice who the responsibility for doing that is put on. He, the father. And what does it tell you that it's a man who doesn't love his son who doesn't discipline him. So that used to be just the core of the black race when the families were still intact. Black people spanked their children. So that was just how it was because as a race we realized that they have to go out into the world. They're not going to stay babies we as a race depend on these children growing up and being able to face life with discipline. But um, we, as a general rule, send our children to public schools or schools that are run by people who have been trained in other public schools. And as such, okay, as such, you're no longer pretty much allowed to spank your children. Now, you still are totally responsible for taking care of them uh, physically, emotionally, and spiritually. But because some people went too far, you can't spank them. But from what I see, the difference is between the generations is that when you spanked a child, now I'm not saying abuse a child, there is a difference. But when you spank the child, you let them know that they're, you're part of a society and you have to do certain things to fit in. The rule is enforced that you are not the center of the universe. You don't get to do what you want to do, when you want to do it, all the time. If you think about it, that forces a child to learn self-discipline. It also forces a child, as I said, to recognize that you don't get to only think about you. You, There are other people here. And in order for everybody to get along well, we all have to adjust. So that also requires discipline. Now, most people will tell you that girls, as a general rule, when they're children, don't require as much discipline as boys. Boys seem to have more energy. Now, I was a, I'm a former teacher, so I can tell you in the classroom, girls will smart mouth you, especially girls will smart like smart mouth female teachers. Boys are more physical. They're up and running around the room. You have to approach them with discipline. And I'm not talking about in the classroom. I'm talking about in the home. But I'm also not telling you to spank your children because, personally, I believe it's too late to even have children. If you already have them and you are in this society, well, you it's, it's problematic to spank them. But on the other hand, recognize that by not being able to offer immediate disciplinary action, that the child can comprehend easily, you're going to probably raise someone, especially a boy, who lacks discipline, who lacks the feeling that other people count, and who also feels that he must have immediate gratification. And if he doesn't feel absolutely positively accepted, well, then there's a problem. And he should not be stopped from whatever attempt he wants to make to solve that problem. So what that has to do with the story that I started off showing you about the young lady who lost her life taking the child to visit his father is that I believe that not spanking has led to a lot of men who have poor impulse control, who cannot delay gratification, who do not feel responsible for their own emotions, they and who lack totally lack self-discipline. And also, self-discipline 
Lack of self-discipline is kind of a lack of self-love. You aren't even holding yourself in enough so that you can respect yourself. So when you have someone who is exhibiting these qualities or came from that kind of a background, and that is pretty much the background everybody's coming from now, you're, you're really leading up to a sort of chaos. So I am very grateful that I don't have children right now. This is a terrible time to have children. Because even if you say, well, I'm going to make sure my children have discipline. Okay, well then, is your child going to live in a vacuum? Do you have to send them to school? Even if you say, well, I'm going to homeschool. Who else are you going to have your children associate with? And what kind of people are they? Personally, like I have been saying, this is a great time, and don't think that I'm just saying this. This is coming from the Savior. This is not the time to have children. You cannot discipline your children, especially your boys, because as I showed you in that scripture, the responsibility for discipline the children, the boys especially, is coming from the father, not the mother. And it's telling you if that man is not there disciplining the child, he doesn't care about the child. Have you noticed that in the black community? So, again, one thing I always want to ex express is that the things that you're seeing now are the things that have been written, have been prophesied. It's just that when you go to church, they're so busy telling you that you, as a black woman, or as a woman in general... You need to shut up, sit down, put on this scarf, and just do whatever this man says. That's not the message of the Bible. And you're not going to find the message of the Bible in your churches, or definitely not your kingdom halls. You have to open the book and see for yourself. You have to look around the world and see, where is this weird stuff coming from? And attach it to what you've already been told. Like I said, I feel like I have a duty to warn you. I'm trying to tell you from personal experience and also from experiences of people who wrote the Bible many, many, many years ago. Times change. Your clothing styles change, but people, they don't change. People needed discipline back in the day, especially boys, because boys are naturally Males, I believe, are naturally more aggressive. They are naturally more physically active. You have to, and it's better, as the scripture said, if it's a man doing it. They have to be taught to channel that aggression toward positive activities, like protecting their families and building them up. But if you think about it, this is, we are different races. There are different races in the world. And even the word race is like there's a competition. So the dominant society does not have a vested interest in having you raise up men. And recognize it has a vested interest in telling you that the person who was not given the responsibility to discipline the children, is blamed for it. And one thing that I also believe that lack of discipline, lack of teaching children self-discipline leads to, is narcissism. Men are, because of the situation that they're in, that they are beloved from birth, but not given expectations that they have to contribute are taught to be narcissistic, are taught to not consider, taught not to have empathy, not to think about, well, maybe I shouldn't do that, not only because of the repercussions, but because I can understand how that feels. So um, this is just something to think about. And like I said, I want very much to explain to women especially black women, that what you're being taught in churches, in kingdom halls, is not 
all it's not the message of the bible where you're concerned i believe that the bible that the heavenly father really loves women but he told you this world is now under the management of the evil one and he does not love you he is after you but um you can look in the bible and find this for yourself now i have been promoting my books and you know i think that you don't know how long we'll be able to even discuss things online or whatever so i do encourage you to please take a look at them and uh you know let me know what you think because i do appreciate feedback and i do appreciate your listening to me i really do because there are so many other things you could be doing but you're here so, you guys have a great rest of your day.